Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel-Smith. Today's tutorial we're going to make some sweet little flower bowls from polymer clay. Now these came about as a result of this, which is a teeny tiny little bowl and actually this isn't a bowl, this is something that I make to rest my covered goose eggs on when I've made one of those and covered it in polymer clay. And having seen that one I thought well I can make one of those bigger and make some little bowls, some little trinket dishes. This one I've used a little bit of a kaleidoscope in the inside and just a very simple petal but I thought we'd have a bit of an experiment and make a brand new petal cane as well. So that's what I've done to give us this nice swirly effect in the petal but an awful lot of the petals that I've already done as tutorials will look good as these flower bowls and obviously you can add different layers and different things on the underside and I'll show you how to do the petals so they curl under or how they curl up. This is what we're going to do today and then I'll talk you through the colours of those two later on as well. And this one's quite a short video, so all the details you need are in the details below the video. The clay, the equipment I'm using, the sizes and the amounts and everything you need. So let's start by making this petal. I thought I'd do a nice bright petal cane for the little flower bowl we're going to do. So I've got white, this is magenta with a little bit of white, this is a mix of blue and turquoise, I've got purple, and this is virtually all yellow with a tiny little bit of green. So the clay I'm using today is Kato poly clay because it's nice stiff um, finish which means the bowls will be very strong when they are completed. Cernit would also be a good clay to use. Primo would be good, good. In fact, most of the recognised brands of clay would be good, but Fimo Soft would probably be the most brittle when it's baked. So just be aware of what you want to use them for and the sort of clay you are using. I've conditioned all of my clays thoroughly in their separate colours. If you're unsure what I mean by conditioning clay or how to do that, I do have a separate video which gives you a few hints and tips and techniques, and I'll put a link to that in the details below. I've put all the colours through on setting number three of my pasta machine which is a medium setting and on my machine naught is thick and nine is thin and the amounts for this, this, this and this I have got 14 grams or half an ounce and for this one I've got 10 grams or a third of an ounce and to make up the green it was probably 20 parts yellow to one part green that's the very small amount but it gives that lovely acidic green now both the green and the purple are going to go on one side to be used later and we're going to start doing a Skinner blend between the white the magenta and this mix of blues again if you're unsure about Skinner blends I do have a video tutorial with a few hints and tips and techniques on how to get a nice Skinner blend and again I will put a link to that in the details below but all we're going to do is cut diagonally through the two end pieces, straight down the middle piece, double them up, put them together so you've got the nice diagonal, and then the mid colour goes down the middle, the white on the end. I'll give them a little roll. them off, press down along the crease and put them back through the pasta machine, fold first, each time collecting, folding in half to end up with a nice blend going from the blue through to the pink through to the white. I'll probably do that about 12 to 15 times and I'll bring you back when I've got that done and we have our nice blend. Having completed the blend I'm just going to fold it in half, you can also chop it in half if you prefer, make sure the fold is nicely pressed down and put it through the same setting that I'm using, dark end first, to get a longer, thinner strip. And now I'm going to put it through the thinnest setting on my pasta machine that is usable. So for me that is setting number nine. Again, dark end first, to get as long and thin a strip as I can. If you know your machine shreds your clay, simply go down to the thinnest usable setting that your machine works with. Once you have your long, thin strip, we are simply going to roll it up from the light end towards the dark. OK, 
Okay, so there we have our plug of clay with the light in the centre and the dark towards the outside. Now, because we are doing a petal cane, you do not need to be neat at any particular point. And if from one end of the cane to the other end of the cane, there is a slight difference in the pattern, that's fine. This is a natural thing we're doing and every petal does not need to be the same. So don't stress, don't worry about this. All we're going to do is exactly the same as we've done so often. Let's cut down into quarters. One at a time, just pull the sides up slightly. And then press along the bottom. Technical term, we squidge, just to make them shorter. Now this is Kato Polyclay, as I said, this is a lot firmer than the clay I normally use. Um, depending on which clay you are using, it'll be slightly easier on your hands. Do two at a time, put those together, and then do the other two. Put all four together, pressing in at the bottom. And because this is Kato and very stiff, I will then turn it on its side and press down hard with my thumb along this edge and then along that edge so that eventually I'll bring the white points in and join up in the middle. I will also be keeping my hand on the end so that as I press down, it doesn't push forward too much in that direction. So we end up with a rough sort of triangular shape to our cane. Now, I don't want this to be too long. Probably about two inches is the right sort of height, about five centimeters. So all I'm going to do with the heel of my hand, I'm just going to press down and shorten this. So it's about something like that. Now, the way we get the swirl in the pattern is to pull out the whole of one side. So keeping the light side of the cane towards you and one side upright all of this is going to be really pulled out so make it a long thin triangle out in this direction but if you can always keeping a little bit of an upright along this side you can already see how these are starting to go out in that direction when you've got it a fair way, you can always put it down on the tile or your work surface. You can also just roll slightly, get that moving until you've got quite a thin part, point towards the outside, something a bit like that. Take the darker colour that you're going to use as the accent and lay that on top and you want it to be from the top part of the cane all the way to the end bit. So rest that on top and then cut away any excess. And I'm just going to pinch along the top to make sure it's nicely fitting to the under colour. And then across that middle bit, I'm just going to pull it ever so slightly down so that we don't get a gap when in a minute we cut this in half and put the two halves together. And then all we're going to do very gently is to curve this long bit in on itself. So just bring it over to start with slightly. So and then work just on the end. Bring it over. And again, each time I've done this, it's come out slightly different. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just do whatever the clay is letting you do on your particular cane. But all we're looking to do is to add a nice swirl just on this one side of our cane and just sort of pull it up until it almost looks like it's going to meet the white but not quite and then we are just going to force that back into sort of like a triangular shape by bringing that to a point and having it flat across the back here so you see I'm just pressing down on the side bringing the white up making it into more of a triangular shape and just go around the whole cane, getting it more into a triangular cane. We 
when you've got it to about it's getting up towards three inches or seven and a half centimeters in length chop down through the middle and when you put the two halves together you should have that nice swirl and that nice movement of the pattern going outside so all we need to do now is put the two halves together and then we need to make it more of a petal shape so we want it to sort of go this way rather than sort of more of a diamond shape that we've got so to start with we want to push these two corners inwards to make them more of a, a square shape to our cane so just gently go down those sides just concentrating on those nothing else at the moment just pushing in and as you do that so we start to get more of a square shape once you can see that then you can turn it on its side and press down to accentuate the square Now we don't need the cane to go very long, we just need to be able to take however many petal slices you want to take. So the ones I've done so far have been five petals on each layer. So today, because I've got examples of those, I'm going to do six petals. So if I've got two layers, six petals on each, I want to make this long enough so that I can take slices. So once we've got it nicely down into square shape, then I'm just going to round off easy to show you on that side round off the sides this being the inner part of the petal this being the outer part so I'm just going to press on the edges to round off the sides and then I'm going to round off the top end by just rolling it across the tile and again you can press in and then with my fingers I'm just pulling this front bit slightly more elongated so we make more of a petal shape. So rounded sides, pulled up slightly towards the middle, relatively even along the length. So don't worry too much because every petal can be slightly different. And then I will rest it. I've got a little bit of a flat edge there. So I'll rest it on that flat edge, chop down in that direction, which should distort it to the least. And let's see what we've got. So those will be our petals for our flower bowl. So the next thing to do at this stage is to make our little centerpiece. I've taken the green clay and rolled it into a log and put the remainder of the purple back through the pasta machine again on setting number three to give myself a piece that will roll around the outside of that. But first, we're just going to put a little dot in the middle and we're going to do that by chopping straight down the centerpiece folding it on either side and with something like this cable needle or a little round roller, anything that's the right sort of size, just create a little groove in the middle. Take a little cut off of your purple and roll this into a very thin sausage. And we're just looking to fit it down one side of our piece. That's it's in the middle the other piece back on top, press it in slightly to get rid of any gap and then put it on the purple, use your blade to make it the right height and wrap our piece around. And all we're going to do now is press in to create a nice even cane and then we will give it a bit of a roll to get the length that we need. So my rule of thumb is if I'm doing a flower bowl or anything to do with flowers and you're doing a centre with a very simple centre like this is to have the same amount of elements going around the outside as you have petals. So as I mentioned I was planning on doing six petals so therefore I want one piece of this in the middle and six around the outside so I need seven lengths of this. So I will start rolling it and as I'm rolling I'm pulling outwards with my hands and do this until I have a piece that is seven times the length I want and I might as well work in inches or two and a half centimeters as that's easy to do.
seven. And then simply chop your pieces. And then I say one piece in the middle, six round the outside. Do one side, turn it over to make sure it's nice and even on the other. And then exactly as we did with the original piece, just press in to get those pieces all nice. And then reduce this to a size that you think will look nice with the petals round the outside. So I'm going to go slightly larger on this one than I did on the other ones I've done, just to show you how it looks. And what I will generally do is cut a piece off and hold it up and sort of have a look and think whether I like the size of that. So I'm happy with the size of that. So I'll take one piece from that. And that sits right on the top and in the middle of our form. Just pressing it down and then it means it's easy to know where you're going to put the petals because you can use these as a guide so you know you've got six petals to go around the outside. The next thing to do is to cut petal slices and then decide whether or not you want to texture them. Again, the thickness of the petals is purely down to you and what you feel comfortable doing. If possible, try and make them as even as you can. So it's more important to be consistent than it is to be sort of um, thick or thin. So just do what you feel comfortable with. But hopefully there should be enough there to sort of get you 10, 12 or 14, depending on how many petals you want in your flower bowl. I like to add a little bit of texture to my pieces so you can buy things like this online or in sort of shops which add the texture that you want. You can also make your own and this is a set that I've made particularly when I do larger petals and things um, and I simply made them in clay and then use the two-part moulding compound. If you're unsure how to make your own texture sheets there's a brilliant tutorial from Helen Briel and I'll put a link to it in the details below. She's got a bowl tutorial and part of that shows you loads of different ways to, to make textures. But all I will do, looks very small on this big sheet but I will put my petal down there and then just very simply press down just to add a little bit of texture. It doesn't add a lot which I don't want a lot for these bowls but it just adds a little something so you presume you can see there just a little bit of texture on either side and it does make sure you've got nice thinner edges to your petals which looks nice as well. So I've done all 12 of them and then all we need to do is work our way around and put the petals on. So I'm going to attach them so that they go over there and just let them drop down and when you're putting petals on a flower you always put one on, miss out one and then do alternate ones and that way you'll get a more naturalistic look to the way that your petals lie. So for a flower with six petals of course effectively you've got two rows of three. And I'll have a quick look, see how they're looking, make sure there's not too many gaps, readjust them as they need it, and then just gently press them down against the form underneath. Once the first layer's on, you can add the second layer and that will be alternate ones. Now, when you add the second layer, we're going to help protect them and keep them slightly proud of the first layer by using little pieces of card. And all I do is take a strip of card, cut a piece out like that, chop the end off, and I do one for each of the extra petals we're going to add to the second layer. So if you want the petals to sit so that they're just sort of going in the same direction as the first ones, then all you're going to do is you're going to bend this around that way and it simply sits there, the petal goes on top and this bit holds this one proud of the outside. If as they're going to do on this one you want them to curl underneath, again all you do is you make the curl card curl that way and then you'll sit that there and the top petal again will curl under and sit going round your card support. 
and depending on whether your clay is very sticky or not you can either do it at this stage as you put each petal on or put all the petals on do the base and then put the um, clay in then put the card in afterwards the Kato is a nice firm clay and doesn't stick too readily so I can put my pieces on and then put the card in afterwards and I'm just going to add these in the same way but so they go in between the two petals on top and I say once we add the support in you can either have them going like that in which case I'd probably curl it slightly like that and have the support in place or if we're doing this one then I actually curl the leaf slightly and just set the card in place for each leaf like that so it just adds that little bit of support as it is baking but say for this one I can do this right at the last minute I'm going to take a little bit of the purple just to fill up that hole in the middle And then we need to add a base. If you've got enough left of your outer colour, use that. If you haven't, then use one of the cutoffs from the end. So I'll mix all this up and then I'm going to put two layers of my thickest setting of my pasta machine, one on top of the other, to give me probably about sort of half a centimetre, about a quarter of an inch worth of thickness and then I'll cut out a round. So there we go, there's my sheet and it gave me a nice sort of mid-violet colour which is lovely. And I was going to take a cutter, I'm going to use the bottom end of one of these metal cutters. Because that's the size that looks good. And again, I'll put the details of the size below the video. That sits on top. Try and get it as central as you can. And then I just like to add just a little bit of extra detail. I will cut a thin slice of this. And just rest that on top just to give a little bit of added detail on the bottom of your bowl so the first thing to do is to give that a bit of a roll because that's securing all of the petals in place but we need to make sure that that is nice and flat so that when our bowl has finished and it's baked it's going to sit nice and flat and the easiest way i've found of doing this is to get a sheet of some form of, um, this is baking parchment, but something like this, baking sheet, baking parchment, greaseproof paper, even a piece of paper will work, but something that's not going to stick. You then turn it the right way up. And if you get something like a piece of board, then generally by eye to start with, get down next to it. And press it so it's nice and flat and you think it's flat and if you're not 100% certain then put a roller on because the roller will soon tell you which direction it needs to be and when you get to the stage that the roller doesn't want to roll you know your piece is nice and flat so you can turn it back upside down that will peel off and now I'm ready to put all of my little paper pieces in. So there we are, I've got all the paper supports in. And one thing, last thing to remember if you're bending them downwards is to make sure that they're not going so far down that they're lower than the height of your base. And all you need to do then is put that on some form of tile or baking um, sheet. Cover the whole thing in aluminium foil is what I would recommend so that if your oven spikes during baking it protects the clay. But other than that, bake according to the manufacturer's instruction for the brand of clay you are using. Once it's cooled, remove it from the form, take out the little card inserts and there you have a very sweet little flower bowl just to put a few little trinkets in. I'll just show you a few other colour options. This cane was made from white, a little bit of yellow mixed with white and a touch of gold, some red mixed with a little bit of white and again a tad of gold and then gold as the outer colour. And on this one, I pulled the outer bit really thin but left most of it um, not pulled out and this gives you a straighter form but then just this slight difference down the edge. That's one way of doing it. And I've made two bowls out of that one. This one with the petals turning downwards and this one as you can see with them turning up. 
and for both of them they'd got just the green a light green in the middle with the gold around the outside so they're how they both look when they are finished this is quite a bright and vibrant one so this was white then into yellow then into magenta with purple around the outside and this was like, like a, a midway pull so not as much as the one we did today which really spreads them out um, but sort of a medium way of pulling so as, as I mentioned depending on how you pull the, the um, that piece out when we're doing the long part of the triangle depending on how far you pull it and how wide you make that piece depends on the different effects you will get on this bit the swirl on the inside when you put it back together so I only had enough to make one bowl out of that one so I've done it with the upward turning petals and again I used a little bit of the light green on the inside because I just think the light green looks nice as the middle and again both this one and these ones had the five petals as opposed to the six petals that I've done with today's sample and that's the tutorial finished quick and simple but giving some very sweet little flower bowls or little trinket dishes I hope you enjoyed that one as always thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to those of you who subscribe I really do appreciate it I hope you have fun experimenting with these and make some little bowls of your own see you next time that's it for now. Bye.